Hello, my most amazing artist. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really stoked because today we're making summertime selfies. We're gonna need two pieces of paper for this, one for making your glasses, the other for making your selfie. Scissors and glue would be great too, but I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm so excited. Let's say our art class catchphrase. I make messes. I make mistakes, obviously I just did, but deep inside, I got what it takes. I am an artist. Great guys, big shout out to Ticonderoga and Art to Remember for sponsoring Art Class with Cassie today. I'll be using my Ticonderoga pencil, permanent marker, coloring markers, and paper. I love their supplies. I'm thrilled that they always give me them to use, but I would use them anyway because that's how amazing they are. And thanks to Art to Remember. I hope you've checked out their website. You definitely should. It's completely free to set up your very own art gallery. How awesome is that? And then you can see your artwork printed on a ton of things that you might want to grab. So thank you, Art to Remember and Ticonderoga. All right, today, paper, pencil, marker, permanent marker, if you have one, but it's not necessary, and whatever you choose to color with, I'll be using crayons and markers, doing a little bit of mixed media. We, of course, will be using the elements of art today. They are line, shape, color, baby, color, form, value, texture, and space. Pinkies out, peeps. <clears throat> I pinky promise that I will do my best. I will finish what I start and I will keep a positive attitude. Mwah! All right, guys, let's grab that paper and start with our glasses first. All right, friends, let's get started on our summertime selfies with our summer reflection in our glasses. So we're gonna begin with creating the glasses first. You'll need two pieces of paper, one for the sunglasses and then one for your self-portrait. I'm actually going to be drawing two kinds of sunglasses. This kind of like, I'll call these a cat eye kind where they come up a little bit and then maybe ones are a little bit more square. If you want to, you can draw two kinds of sunglasses because the way we're going to fold your paper will make it big enough or you can just draw whatever one that you like. So I'm gonna set this aside, grab myself a piece of paper and begin with your paper going horizontally. Go ahead and rotate it just like I did. Then take the left side of your paper and walk it over to the right. Go ahead, match those edges up really well. Hold it still hand, got it, Stevens. And then go ahead and smooth out the bump. Smooth out the bump. Now, if you want to draw two pairs of glasses, you might want to go ahead and do what I'm about to do, but if you only want to draw one, then you can just sit back and relax. So I'm gonna take now, keeping my paper folded, I'm going to bring the top of my paper down to the bottom. Sometimes paper that's thick doesn't always want to fold. You might have to exercise it a little bit, help the paper bend a couple of times before you bring it down. I'm gonna go ahead and match those two up the best I can, hold it still. If it's a little crunched up inside there, I'm just gonna use my finger to pull that paper out before I fold it. Once your paper's been folded this direction, go ahead and unfold it. Now the reason we folded our papers was because your sunglasses need to be a certain size. This is the perfect size, and we are only going to be drawing half of the sunglasses. We'll only be drawing half. We're gonna draw this cat eye one here. The other square one is going to be drawn down here. I'll be drawing with a permanent marker. You might wanna draw with a pencil. And when you're drawing, this part is super duper duper important. Your fold must be on the left side. All right, so I'm gonna start making sure my fold is on the left side. Again, I'll be drawing these glasses here and the more square Ray-Ban style glasses down here. All right, go ahead and find the, this line segment, the top of your paper and the middle of your paper. And now bring your two fingers together kind of at the same time. Basically, you're just trying to find the middle. So you don't have to get all fancy with your fingers. I don't even know why I did that. Just find the middle of that line segment right there. 
Once you find the middle, go ahead and put a short little line right above the middle. And I'm actually going to do those exact same steps down here. So I'm finding the middle of that line and drawing a short line. We're gonna start with this part right here, the bridge of the glasses, the, the part that goes over your nose. Now I'm going to draw another line. It's going to be a little bit below this one, about one finger away. Oh, my finger bumped it, that's okay. I can take care of that by coloring my glasses black, right? No big deal. Now I'm gonna do the same thing down here, except this time I'm gonna try not to let my finger make a boo-boo. So I have two lines, the same length, spaced one finger apart. Awesome. Now what we need to do is decide where we want the glasses to end. So I'm up in this corner. I'm gonna put a little polka dot right there, and I'll do the same thing here. In that corner, putting another little polka dot. In this corner is a little polka dot, and then in that corner is another one. Now I need to make a line that's going to go up, over, and to that dot. Up, over, and to that dot. And notice I practice with my finger a couple of times, and now I'm gonna draw slowly, because it's such a long line. I wanna make sure that I'm aiming in the right direction. There we go. And now these glasses are a little bit more square. So for that, I think I'm gonna go up a little bit. And then I'll make my U-turn, not a U-turn, my turn, and go over to there. There we go, now we have the top of our glasses. I'm gonna make a short line that comes down here and a short line that comes down there. That's for this part of the glasses. And then we're going to come in a little bit. And if you're wondering, uh, how come we only draw in half? Because we folded the paper in half. We're gonna cut it out and boom, you're gonna have two pairs of glasses. I know, it's crazy, just trust me. All right, now let's decide where we want the bottom of the glasses to be. So I'm finding the bottom of my paper. I'm putting a little polka dot a little bit above the bottom of my paper. Now for these glasses, there's a big curve. This little big curve, like a letter U. So I'm gonna go down and over. You'll notice that I'm drawing slowly and carefully so I can keep my eye on where I'm going. I wanna make sure these glasses are big, right? I have to have enough space in here to really put whatever I'm looking at, what's in the reflection of my glasses. These are a little bit more square, so then I'm gonna come down over. Maybe I'll start that back again over here. Now, I'm actually going to switch for a hot minute to a pencil. So if you've been using a marker, let's trade out for a pencil. Let's draw the lens of the glasses, this inside line. And I'll show you why I'm using a pencil in just a moment. I'm now going to draw. Notice I'm pressing nice and firmly with my pencil adding a nice amount of pressure to get a dark value, building up actually a layer of graphite for my pencil for this trick we're about to do. I am making the lens of my glasses. Notice that I'm following the same shape of my glasses. We'll do the same thing here. Pressing nice and firmly with my pencil, tracing, kind of trying to space it the right amount. Awesome, there we go. Okay, now I'm gonna make this a little darker. Why we did this is because it's sometimes a little tricky to get your lenses, or whenever you're trying to draw something, it's tricky to always make it symmetrical or the same. So here's something you can do. If you're drawing and you're trying to make two things that are exactly the same, try drawing it on one side of your paper with a pencil, unfold your paper, and then I'm gonna, I pushed it in so it would fold a little bit better this way, making sure that my glasses are on top. And now I'm just going to trace that inside lens. I can barely see it through with my pencil. And it's important that as I trace, I press really, really hard with my pencil because what I'm trying to do is make a little bit of a copy or a ghost line. I'll show you, let's see if it worked. Hey, hey, look at that, it worked great. Now I'm only tracing this line. I'll show you why in just a moment that we don't have to do the others. So let's see, I'll do the same thing down here, just trying to see through it. 
It's hard to see it through my paper. Because my paper is opaque. All right, let's see if that one worked. Yay, just missed one little spot right there. Hey, hey, now I'm going to refold it back the way that I had it. And keeping my paper folded, making sure that my glasses start and end on the left side, I'm going to cut these out. And you know, when I cut, I'm starting at that fold, I always have my scissors pointed outward. And I have my extra hand that's usually, not gonna lie, a little bit lazy. I heard that. It does all the work of rotating the paper for me. And sometimes if you have these pieces, that are hanging off, they kind of get in the way. You can just trim those off. There we go. Ba bam Let's see, moment of truth. Did it work? Hey, look at that, I have a pair of sunglasses. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Now, you're in your glasses, you are drawing a reflection of something that you wanna see. It could be something that you maybe want to do this summer. It could be something that you wish you could do this summer. It could be a fantasy. Somebody that was drawing with me today during art class with Cassie drew a dragon in their glasses. You can draw whatever your cute little art making heart desires. I will be drawing a rainbow in one and a beach scene in the other. So if you want to draw along with me, super, but you do not have to. I'm actually gonna lay both of my glasses out here so you can see. All right, now I will be drawing with a permanent marker. You can draw with a pencil, a crayon, whatever, a crayon, <laughs> what am I talking about? You can draw with crayon, you're gonna color with a crayon. You can draw with a pencil or a marker. All right, so I've got my sunglasses all set and ready to go. And the first thing I'm gonna do is trace those inside lenses. Trace around that. There we go. And this one. See how much easier it is for me to get my lenses exactly the same because we did that little trick of making a copy of the lens with our pencil. So that's a really cool trick that you could do anytime that you're making something symmetrical. All right, I think I'm going to go for rainbow in the top pair. So if you want to draw a rainbow with me, a rainbow has, Roy G. Biff has six, no, eight, seven colors. <laughs> I, I guess I should learn my rainbow. I'm only going to be drawing red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, six. Ooh. You would think I didn't teach art. I'm going to draw a curve here because I'm going to imagine that this rainbow curves over to here. One, two, three, four. Let's see if this gives me enough. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. All right, now I have to imagine it coming over here. I know I'm going really fast, so you could always just press that pause button, or if you miss something, just rewind. Or if you're waiting for the beach scene down here, you could just fast forward. All right, let's see, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. I think I'll draw my clouds next. So I'm gonna use a curved line, maybe a loop-de-loop -loop kind of line. Draw a little bit of the bottom of the cloud there. Oh, that's looking awesome. I know yours is looking even awesome -er. You didn't know that was a word, but it is. Okay, that looks great. If you're finished, you can color. I used mixed media, meaning I used a little bit of marker and some crayons. I mixed up my art supplies to color mine. Now for this one, I think I'll do waves for the ocean. Sometimes waves can be tricky. You could draw them any way you want to, but I'm gonna show you how I draw them. I start with a line like this. Then I draw the top of a C. Then I draw a baby C inside. Curve, it just kind of went up top of the C, baby C. And then once you get the hang of it, you can go a little faster when you do it. It might help you 
to practice on a piece of practice paper until you feel like you get it. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe add some clouds. You could add a sun. This is your art time, your time to add whatever you want. Now on this side, I'm gonna draw a little island. I'm gonna start with my palm tree. Give it some coconuts. And maybe the trunk. I'm gonna imply texture. What are you implying? I'm implying that this tree has a texture. I'm gonna give it some palm fronds. That, those are the big leaves that come away from it. Now, you could draw them any way you like. I draw them like these. With some lines. Lines, lines, lines. Again, texture. Look at me using all the elements of art. Okay, how about an island? I'm gonna make a curve. Maybe add a seashell. You could add anything you want a person on your island. Oh, a treasure map, like in a bottle. That would be cool. Whatever you like, but I want this water to continue over to here because you're seeing whatever you're drawing in your glasses should continue from one pair of glasses to the other. All right, you can now grab your crayons, grab your markers, color whatever one you want to color, and let's go. All right, now that I'm all done coloring one pair of glasses, I didn't color my other pair, but I do want to show you how to draw two different kinds of faces. So I'll be drawing one similar to this one here and one similar to this one there. So keep your eye on whatever one you want to draw, but just know you can totally change things up, switch things around, do whatever you like. All right, so for the first thing I want you to do is think about where you want to place those glasses, the composition of the placement of things. You might want to leave enough room at the top for your hair, thinking down here where your face will go. So probably just a little bit above the middle, you could use tape, glue or glue stick to stick it down, but keep in mind that the ends of your glasses won't need glue because the ends of your glasses are hanging off your paper. So notice how I drew not quite the whole shape for the glasses, but kind of ended it on the ends, not putting any glue there because I don't want to accidentally glue my artwork to my table. All right, I'm going to lower it down, maybe angle it or tilt it a little bit. It's going to go off my paper. It's coming out of space. And don't forget to massage. Now these guys, I'm not done coloring them yet. So I'm just gonna set them here. It's easier for me to color it and then glue it down. It's hard to color it so neatly when things are glued down. The glue puts a weird texture underneath your paper. So you might wanna have that finished first. All right, let's make the nose. Now here's the deal. To make these glasses look really big, that's our goal, to emphasize and exaggerate them, we need to draw everything else pretty small. So the face is gonna be little. So I'm gonna draw a little nose. You could draw your nose any way you like. I'm gonna draw two different kinds. And then when you make your mouth, I'm gonna draw these very similar, but you don't have to draw like me. Again, we're keeping things pretty small, right? The smaller we draw it, the bigger the glasses will appear. There's the cute little mouth. I'm drawing something similar here. Maybe you could draw your teeth inside. If you've lost a tooth, color that tooth away. Maybe I don't want to draw teeth in this one, but there's the tongue inside with like a flying bird shape. And I will finish coloring that in. Easy, right? Super easy. Now, I think I'll color that one later with marker. Now that that's done, we need to decide where your chin will be. So I'm gonna put my finger right here. I want my chin to be right there. Notice it's a little mark because it's just one that's for me to see. Now think about how you want your chin to go. So you'll start at the bottom of your glasses, touch your dot, go, 
back up. Great! Starting here. It does help to practice with your finger a couple of times first. Now your eyes and your eyebrows, all of that is hidden underneath here. Let's go ahead now and work on the top of your head. Now you can make your hair any way you want to. I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways, but don't feel like you have to do it like that. I'm gonna draw my hair that kind of comes down over my forehead, even though I don't have bangs. I just used a loop-de-loop -loop line. You could use a straight line if you do have bangs that come down. Maybe I wanna show that my hair is in a ponytail or in one of my drawings, I made two ponytails and that's what I'm gonna do here. So for that, I'll put a circle here and another circle here. Those are my ponytail holders. And for this one, I think I'll draw um, the hair, the top of the head. Maybe there's a little bit of hair sticking out and then back down. Easy. And if you have hair that has a different texture, a different style, you might want to grab a mirror. For this, I just use a curved or a looped kind of line. Okay, now I need to draw my head, the top of my head. I'm going to hop over those little beads are going to hold my ponytails because they are overlapping my head. I'm going to make my hair, you think about what kind of texture you have. My hair looks like it's fly. I'm gonna, I look like I'm jumping. Maybe that's why my hair is up. I love that idea. So I just used some lines to show texture. Think about the texture of your hair. If it's curly, use a curly loop-de-loop -loop kind of line. You're implying texture here, that your hair feels a certain way. I love that it's up like that. I'm gonna make this one. great thing about hair is you can't mess it up because hair is always going every which way especially if you just rolled out of bed and put your sunglasses on you got bad head all right there we go now that our hair is complete I guess I should do some implied lines here also now let's work down here if you want to let's draw a peace sign or a hang loose cowabunga kind of hand I suppose that would be perfect for this one since it looks like we're in Hawaii. Wouldn't that be lovely? All right, so if you want to, I'm just going to lay my hand here so I can actually see what my hand does. The first thing I'm going to do is do this outline of my fingers. So I'm going to go up, down. That's for this guy. Up and down. So I've got my piece. Now for this one, my three fingers are bent down. So to show that, I'm gonna draw three ovals. One, two, three. For this one, my two fingers are bent down, just two, right? And they're right there. Okay, and now for this guy, we've got a pinky. This pinky is up, but it's small. And then curve down for the side of your hand. Your thumb kind of goes out. So I'm gonna go out and come back. Comes in and down. In, down. And then this wrist goes all the way off your paper. Good job, look at that. Okay, for your thumb, I'm gonna draw an oval right there. That's my thumb bending this way connect side of my hand side of my hand down down boom peace out now I'm gonna draw a neck with two vertical lines my neck is shaped like a cylinder so to show that I'm gonna draw a curved line and then comes my shoulders at the base of my neck. Now that I'm all finished, and I had a little extra space here, I could write a message like, peace out, or cowabunga. So I think I'll write peace. Out. 
And then you could decorate your shirt or add any other kinds of designs. If you want to know how to spell cowabunga, it's a super cool word because it's spelled just like how it sounds. Cowabunga! Dudes. Okay, now we're ready to color. Now when you're coloring, and by the way, you could add patterns or designs. When you're coloring today, you could use whatever art supply you want. But keep in mind that if you're using something like a crayon, you could really change the value, right? The lightness to darkness of a color simply by how lightly or hard you press down on your crayon. So I could always make a darker value this way. When you're coloring, I know you want to do your very best, you could color the background. I'm coloring everything except the background, and here's why I'm deciding to do that. This is my artistic decision coming into play, my license to be an artist. I'm deciding to leave that part blank because I really want to emphasize those glasses. If I put too many things happening in my work of art, if I color in just everything, it might be a little distracting. Somebody looking at it might not notice how cool my giant glasses look. So be thinking about that as you color. I hope that you guys had a blast making your giant pair of sunglasses. If you made two pairs of sunglasses, here's an idea. Here's something you could do. You could use that extra pair of sunglasses to take actual selfies. That's right. You just hold it up to your real face and then take a picture. You won't be able to see anything, but it'll still look pretty cool. These guys should fit you pretty well. Of course, if you have an extra pair, you could draw a different view. You could draw one for somebody else, make a gift. It's up to you. Guys, if you enjoyed creating this today, don't forget to give this video a big old thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. New videos like this are added almost every day. So if you love to create as much as I do, you'll definitely want to tune in. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Peace out and cowabunga dudes.